Hello and thanks for watching. Today I'm going to show you how to make a correlation graph. I'm using this graph as part of a science fair report and I'll also show you some tricks that will help you work between Google Sheets and Google Docs. First of all, I gathered all my data using a Google form. I asked people their height, the length of their forearm, and the length of their nose. I got about 19 responses here and I'm going to start making the correlation graph. First I click on the top of column B and then I hold down the command button and click on column A. I can go to the insert menu and insert a chart and I can also find that over here on the more menu under chart. In this latest updated version of Google Sheets um, I want to choose a different type of chart and the top two suggestions bring me to a scatter chart, which makes sense. All of my height values are the x coordinates, all the forearm values are the y coordinates. That's not the order I want them in, I want the height to be on the other side. So I'm going to go back to my data after I delete this chart, and I'm going to move the height column over to the other side. So now the one on the left becomes the x value and the column on the right becomes the Y value. Again, I'm clicking on the whole column. I'm holding down Command so I can click two separate columns and then I'll go back to inserting my chart again. And again, I will change it from a line chart to a scatter chart. And now we have the forearm down here as the X value and the height as the Y value. We can see already there might be some type of pattern here. There might be some type of trend. So we want to go over here to customize. And we want to put a couple things in our graph to help us describe this data. I'm going to the series area. And I'm going to insert what's called a trend line. I'm looking for a pattern. I'm looking for a trend. I'll make that line extra thick to make it easy to see on the screen and I'll change the color to something bright so it really stands out. Now we can see this trend line here hits many of the dots but not all of them so it's a very strong pattern we would say or a strong correlation. I'm going to quantify that now by clicking this box to show the R squared score. The R squared score is this long mathematical formula you learn it in college in a statistics class and it shows you the strength of these two variables in relation to another. Okay, now to show you why point A2 is a strong correlation, I'm going to now graph the other set of data. That's the length of people's nose and their height. So quickly repeating those steps, I pull out that graph and this, customize again, under the series, what do I look for? That's right, trend line. And make my line bright and large and R squared. So we can see here from the data that it's way more scattered. The person that is has the longest nose is not the tallest person. The person with the shortest nose is the shortest person in the class but the rest of the data is all over the place. And we have an R squared score here of 0.119. Let's compare that to the R squared score we saw before, 0.84. So R squared scores range between 0 and 1 for positive correlations, and 0 to negative 1 for negative correlations. Let's see how I'm going to use this data in my Google Doc now. First, I want to bring over the data table. So I move these charts out of the way, and I highlight just the data that I want, the first 19 piece of data here. And I go to Edit and Copy. The keyboard commands, Command-C, don't always work inside of Google Sheets. I'm going back to my report, and I'm going to the data table, 
where I can edit and paste that in. Now here's a great option to use. Link to the spreadsheet. I'll show you what this does in a minute. Having this data table linked to the spreadsheet does a couple of great things for you. For example, we have three pieces of data in here that were not included in our correlation graph. This one, this one, and this one, because a spreadsheet won't include any data that has text in the same cell. So I go back to here, I delete the text out of those cells, even though those people were trying to be accurate and label their data, and you can see the graphs are changing as that data gets entered into my graph. And so the values have changed slightly, and I'll need to reflect that in my science fair report. When I come back to the report, I can click the update button that appears, and those values change, and now all my data is included. Let's go down to the graph portion, and I'm going to insert those graphs by going up to the three dots, and I want to copy this chart so that I can bring it over to my document. So I will do edit and paste. And again, I want to link this to the spreadsheet so that if my data changes again, I'm not redoing all of this, it automatically reappears as the latest version of this graph. I can repeat that again for my second graph and both my tables will be complete. Once again, as a reminder, I'll leave this text right here to help describe how I talk about this data, how I analyze it or draw conclusions from it to be as thorough as possible about what my data means.